Good afternoon to one and all present over here. Today, I, Nikita Singh, will present to you all the roots of plant intelligence. Today, I will talk about those who create more than 99% of biomass on earth. Those independent ones who are responsible for making our lives being possible. Those who being fixed at a place, unable to move around, prepare their own food, defend themselves and feed the world. The autotrophs are the producers. Oh, I missed the obvious one. The green dead vegetables for which I am repitching today to be understood as an intelligent ones. Intelligence meaning to choose in between or making decisions can be defined as a problem solving capability as Problem solving successful decisions are considered to be an attribute of intelligence. Connecting the definition of intelligence with human beings gives us a fluent way to walk with us having the capabilities of affecting the world by sensing, communicating, being mobile, predictive modeling, foraging, decision making and many more. But the way becomes a bit crazy when plant is added before the word intelligence because the usage of word behavior as the meaning depicts is a bit hard to imagine when plants are discussed. But according to Cleve Baxter, plants do show behavior. In one of his experiments where he hooked up a polygraph machine to the leaf of Dracaena and just by imagining that the leaf is set to fire he could observe that the needle of the machine rose, which showed plants can sense. Can they? The sessile lifestyle, as biologists term it, calls for an extensively nuanced understanding of one's immediate environment, since the plant has to find everything it needs and has to defend itself while the remaining surrounding is fixed in place. A highly developed sensory apparatus is required to do this. According to a plant neurobiologist, Dr. Stefano Mancuso, plant can sense between 15 and 20 different senses, including analogs of R5. beginning with sight. But wait, without having eyes, how is it possible? And the answer is, we cannot judge plants' vision by asking them to read the second last line of a book. They sense light and darkness too, in their own way. Like us, they do have photoreceptors like phototropins and phytochromes throughout the stem and leaves. These phototropins and phytochromes are completely different from those found in animals' eyes. Time-lapse photography is the only way to equate the definition of movement in plants and animals. Plants' vision can be observed in the phenomena of phototropism through time-lapse photography. We have seen plants bend towards light. While we walk or drive to get food, plants grow towards it. It was Darwin who tested plants bending to the light. If the tip of the seedling was cut off, the plant didn't change direction. Cells in the growth tip sensed light and direct the rest of the plant how to grow in response. Sound. We have heard about plants preferring music, though Music is not ecologically relevant for plants, but there are vibrations that could be advantageous for them, as it's been found that by just hearing the recording of a caterpillar chomping a leaf, plants produced chemicals in defense, which proves that plants sense sound. Moving on to smell. Parasitic wine or dodder contains almost no chlorophyll cannot prepare its food, thus requires a host around which it coils and sucks the sugary sap. 
and it distinguishes between potential hosts by their smell, indicating their ability to smell. In case of daughter, a number of hosts are rejected within a few hours of first contact, indicating choice. Before coiling around host, an optimization of how much resources to be invested and how much to be sucked out is done, indicating a predictive modeling. And if we will think of the overall scenario where we can see that plants are making choices by sensing smell, making calculations before parasitizing, we must end up thinking that what a thought process is involved by the plants in getting themselves food, indicating a brilliant foraging capability. Touch. Our sense of touch is really several senses each detected by specific receptor on specific type of nerves and those signals are eventually processed by brains. Plants can sense those same signals. They just do it in their own way. There is a phenomena called thigmotropism where thigma meaning touch and tropism meaning direction which defines the movement of plants when subjected to directional pressure. This can be observed in a number of plants. Taking pea plant for example. When the tendrils are stimulated by a wooden stick, the tendril will tend to move towards the direction of the stick. What happens is the pea plant's outer surface is covered by sensors that sends the signal to the cells below. The stimulated cells grow less rapidly than the outer ones causing it to twist around wherever it touches. This is what allows the pea plant to grow in all direction, stretching around, feeling the world, making the foundation for the rest of the plant to grow. Moving on to plants communicating ability. While walking through a field, we can hardly imagine plants silent chatterings as plants do communicate using chemical vocabulary, meaning they communicate by releasing volatile chemicals which acts as a mechanism of defense. A plant has 3000 chemicals in its vocabulary while an average student has 700 words in its vocabulary. No offenses. This is a tomato plant and this is an aphid, sucking the juice out of its leaf. The plant is putting up a fight using both physical and chemical defenses to repel the attacking insects. But that's not all. The tomato plant is releasing compounds that signal nearby tomato plants to release their own defense chemicals as plants are constantly under attack. They face threats from microscopic fungi, bacteria, small herbivores like aphids, caterpillars and grasshoppers. The movement of carnivorous plants like Venus flytrap is always fascinating to watch. Let's have a look at the commendable technique involved in it. Each plant consists of five to seven leaves, each of which is divided further into an upper and a lower leaf. The upper leaf or trap has two trapezoidal lobes that are held together by midrib at the base. Each lobe of the leaf contains three to five trigger hairs or trichomes arranged in a triangular pattern, which are sensitive to mechanical stimuli. On the edge of each trap are finger-like projections known as cilia, which interlock when the trap closes to keep prey from escaping. The mechanical stimulation of the trigger hairs generate a receptor potential followed by an action potential, leading to an electrochemical signal for trap closure. This process is similar to the action potential found in mammalian muscle contraction and nerve impulse. Action potential can precede 
trap closure when a total of 14 mu coulomb charge is received which shows the calculative this decision two mechanical stimuli within 5 to 6 seconds are required for trap closure when it is stimulated the trichomes are stimulated we can observe the rise in action potential. Till now, we have discussed plants' response to stimuli. But how is it possible without brains? Or do they have brains? Plants indeed have brains, just not in the shape that first comes to our mind. The plant brain is their root apex. It was Darwin who observed that the tip of the radical acts as the brain of lower animals. The small region called the transition zone is where you have the highest consumption of oxygen in plants. And here we will observe signals of action potential. These signals are very similar with what we have in the neurons of our brains, which is used to exchange information. Now we know that the root effect has just a few hundred cells that show this kind of feature. But we also know that how big is the root apparatus of small plants like a plant of rye. We have almost 14 million of roots and more than 11 and a half million of root effects. So we can say that plants have million brains. Each root apex works in a network with all the others. And even when it loses 90% or more of its root system, a plant is able to survive and continue communicating. This is a clear advantage over animals who would quickly perish if they lose and fun the function of their one brain. Mancuso has compared the root apparatus of to internet. They work in the same way. But why are they so similar? Because they have evolved for the same reason, that is, to survive predict. The whole world follows give and take relationship. Plants gives us oxygen and makes our lives possible. But what about us? Plants are the symbol of modernity having much more sophisticated sensing ability than us. But people have an easier time granting intelligence to computers than plants. If we were to vanish tomorrow, the plants would be fine. But what if the plants vanished? It's only human arrogance that keeping us away from appreciating the plants. At last, I want to conclude that we must stop regarding plants as the passive objects, the mute, immobile furniture of our world, and begin to treat them as protagonists in their own dramas, highly skilled in the ways of contending in nature. A suggestion. Next time, when you stop to look and smell the flowers, Take a moment to consider. They might be doing the same. Thank you.